Hey everybody, my name's Ryan, and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2020 GMC Sierra. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Pace Edwards Bed Locker Retractable Tonneau Cover. So using a tonneau cover is a great way to not only keep the weather out of the bed of your truck, but it's also going to keep anything inside protected. So I know a lot of guys have tools and uh, material back here that they want to keep protected and secure. And since this is an aluminum type cover, it's really secure. You're going to have a really hard time getting in through this cover. So used in conjunction with the locking tailgate, you're not going to have anything to worry about. All your stuff inside uh, the bed is going to be locked up nice and tight. So that way when you get off work, you're not going to have to sweat trying to grab your tools or anything else out, bring them to the house and deal with all that. So you can kind of rest peacefully there. Um, another big thing is how the ton of cover is going to look and actually function. And honestly, this one is top notch in my opinion. It is more or less a flush mount design. So you're not going to see it sticking up uh, over the set side of your bed and drawing a whole lot of attention to it. And even better is whenever you're driving, you're not going to have anything blocking or obstructing your view as you're going down the road. So with everything all closed up, we know it looks great and everything, but honestly, I think the coolest thing about this setup is the fact that it is electric. So whenever you're ready to open it up or close it back up, all you're gonna have to do is push a button. And I don't know if you've messed with other tonneau covers before. Uh, some of them can kind of be a pain where you're dealing with the straps and hooks and, and everything else trying to open and close it. It's not really all that much fun. This one's super easy. It gives us two remotes, so it's actually wireless. So you can throw one on your keyring, and whenever you're ready to open it up, you simply just push open. So you push the button once, it'll open, and what's neat is it actually has a break. So let's say, for example, you only wanted to open it halfway to maybe put whatever it is you might be putting in back there. You'd simply hit the button again and it will stop it. So pretty cool little feature there. I bet it would come in handy if I had to guess. If you need full bed access, not a big deal either. You just continue to open it. It'll stop on its own whenever you're opening it and closing it so you don't have to worry about anything like that. And as you can see, even with it fully open, we pretty much have complete bed access. We're gonna lose a little bit of space up front there, but in my opinion, the trade-off is well worth it. So just to kind of give you an idea on how flush this actually is, uh, we got a pretty good view of it right here, and it pretty much just shoots straight across. As far as the rails here on top of your actual bed rails, I mean, it comes up just a hair. If I had to guess, maybe about an eighth of an inch you can just about get your fingernail underneath there and that's it so about as tight as you can get it and as clean as you can in my opinion and for those of you that are wondering how much space up here uh, we're going to lose exactly i figure i'd just take a quick measurement so we can figure that out if we just go from the front of the cover there back to the seal it's going to be right at about 14 inches so honestly not really a huge deal still have plenty of bed space to work with but keep in mind the canister isn't going to come all the way down to the very bottom of the bed like a toolbox or something would for example we're still going to have a decent amount of space here so maybe if you had some lumber or something like that you could still slide it underneath there without any issues you know i have seen a lot of different tonneau covers and to be honest this one is probably the best fitting or what i mean by that is how tight and sealed everything is but if there's a will there is a way and to be honest over time water and moisture could potentially seep through those seals you know and accumulate in your canister and if that does end up happening not really a huge deal there's a drain on each side that'll allow that to run down and out underneath the truck that way nothing's puddling up in there or you're not gonna have to worry about anything rusting out so you know inside you can be confident that it's gonna be nice and dry and stay in good working order and that's really important considering too that there's uh, an electrical motor in there 
that needs to stay dry to function for years to come. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's really not too complicated or confusing, but it is time consuming. You know, in between running the wiring and getting all that set up and then coming into the bed of the truck and actually getting the tonic cover on, it does eat up a little bit of time. But as long as you stay patient, you shouldn't have any issues getting it done at home. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. So to get our drains in, in our case, we are going to have to enlarge a factory drain hole, which is right here. Some trucks have um, little plastic grommets, if you will, on the front of your bed here. And if that's the case, what you can do is pop those out and use those openings for your drain plug. So if you have a grommet there, you don't need to do any of this drilling that we're getting ready to do. But with that being said, since we don't have those grommets, we're gonna enlarge this hole. We're gonna do this on each side of our truck. So we can take a step bit and create that opening. With that being said, regardless of where you're drilling or anything, whenever you're doing any type of drilling in your bed, you wanna be sure to check underneath it to make sure you're not gonna hit something of importance. do is make sure our drain fits in there. And now that we verified it does, what I'm going to do is just grab some paint and put a layer over that bare metal. That way it's not exposed and it'll be protected a little bit from rust and corrosion and things like that. So now that it's dry, go ahead and take our tube and just push it down a little bit. We can kind of just let it hang out for now. So now what we need to do is start to route some of our wiring inside of the truck bed here. That way we can eventually plug it into our tonic cover. So over here on the driver's side towards the very front of our truck, if we look, we're going to have a small rubber grommet. We're just going to pop that out. And to get our wiring in here, we're going to run it up from the bottom. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a pull wire. This is a piece of tubing. You could use a coat hanger or something like that as well. But we're simply just gonna feed this down to the underside of our truck bed. That way we can go down there, connect our wiring to it and pull it up into position. So right here is where our pull wire dropped down underneath the truck. And you wanna grab your harness and tape it to it. You wanna tape the side that has the small plug that'll actually plug into the tonneau cover motor itself. Now, in our case, um, we also taped on the harness that allows you to control the tonic cover from a switch that is sold separately. But if you're going that route as well, now would be a great time to uh, run that wiring as well. So with both of those connected, we can hop back up in the bed, go ahead and pull our wiring up where it needs to be. So back up top here, if you work your fish wire, and pull we're able to get our connectors out and i'll remove them from the fish wire and we're going to leave maybe about a foot or two of uh, wiring to work with up here uh, so I don't fall back down in the hole what i'll probably do is just kind of just kind of loop it around these little hooks here that way it'll keep it secure so now here underneath the truck i went ahead and routed our wiring towards the front of our vehicle. And this is a path that I took, just dropped straight down. And I more or less just followed the whole side of our frame rail here. So they come up and along through here. There's actually some factory uh, wiring that I just followed. Just continues on kind of behind this uh, body mount here and continues on. And then right here, there's actually a factory plastic grommet and I drilled a small hole through it and our uh, separate switch wires, that harness goes up through there, which I'll show you that in a moment once we get underneath the truck. But with that being said, the two power wires that came with the cover itself continue along straight 
uh, kind of behind your wheel well liner. And again, there's a factory harness that runs right up into the engine compartment uh, next to our driver's side battery. When you're doing this, make sure to avoid any hot or moving parts. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure to use some zip ties to keep everything secure. So here's where our wires come on up into the engine compartment. And now we can hook them up to our battery. Before you hook them up to the battery though, you wanna make sure to come to your fuse holder and remove that fuse. We're gonna be installing this uh, at the very end once everything is hooked up. That being said, we'll first start with our black ground wire. It's gonna have a pre-attached ring terminal. So I'll come here to the negative terminal on our battery and remove this bolt. It's gonna be a 13 millimeter socket that we're using to do that. So once that nut's removed, you can slide on the ring terminal and tighten it back down. Once that one is tight, we can then move to this post here. That one is going to be a 10 millimeter. So once we have that one removed, we can just take our positive lead wire, which would be the red one here, take the ring terminal, slide it over the stud, and again, just tighten that nut back down. So now moving back to uh, the switch wires that I said I'd show you that ran up through that factory grommet. To get to that grommet, you're gonna have to come here to the driver's side, pull out this threshold um, and this plastic uh, seat plate here. And these are super simple. You can literally just grab them and pop them free. Really not much to it. There's a couple clips there that secure them. Same thing with the threshold here. You just kind of lift up on it and work your way and they're just all gonna pop. Uh, pop free. So once you have those out of the way, what you're able to do is grab your carpet and lift it up. And our customer actually already has some wiring running through here. They've got uh, power running boards and some other lights and things like that. <clears throat> but this is the grommet here with these two wires coming out that uh, we used. So what I did was I just drilled a small hole in it from up here, went down underneath and pushed her wires through. And then I just kind of shot them up under the carpet a little bit where they come out right here under the dash. Now what we can do is get ready to uh, hook up our extra switch. So I'm just gonna prepare our wires. So I'm gonna strip the ends of the insulation off. And give them a good twist, make sure they're nice and tight. I'm gonna grab the uh, spade terminals that came with the switch kit. That's just gonna slide over the end of the wire. And we're gonna crimp it down. Same thing for this wire here. So now what I went ahead and did is actually just mounted up this little bracket here for our switch that came with the switch kit. And what I did, there's actually a factory uh, bolt right there that kind of helps secure the dash. I pulled that out. I slid our switch bracket in there behind it and then ran that bolt back through so everything's nice and secure. Once you have it like that, you wanna take your two uh, wires and run them through the switch opening itself there in the bracket. Now we can grab our switch and the kit comes with uh, a small length of black wire here with a, a spade terminal and a ring terminal already attached. This will be a ground wire. You're going to want to attach that to the middle prong here on the switch. I'm going to take this end and just run it through our bracket like we did the other wires. Kind of let this hang for now. Eventually we'll find a spot to ground this. And for the time being, we can move back to our switch and hook up our other two wires. It does not matter uh, what color wire goes on which terminal. If you wanna change the orientation of the switch, which way it makes the cover open and close, you'll just switch these two wires to the other 
terminal. With that being said, we'll just put this one here at the bottom. Do this one here on the top. And then we can start to feed all of our wires through. And what you'll do is just push this switch into the bracket. It'll lock in place. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm gonna make sure once we get everything together, everything's working the way it should, it should be. And once I verify that, I'll just come back and just push that in, it'll lock in place. So I went ahead and attached our black ground wire here coming from the middle of our switch. And it turns out just right behind that threshold panel that we popped off, there's actually a factory ground post, which is this here. So you remove that nut using a 10 millimeter socket, slide that ring terminal over it and tighten it back down. Now we can actually start to assemble the cover itself. So I went ahead and put the whole assembly in the bed. And what you're gonna wanna do is make some type of stand here. That way it'll hold our whole assembly maybe a couple inches above our bed rail. So if you didn't destroy your box that this came in, you could use that. In our case, I just use a few pieces of wood and some paper towel boxes, so gets the job done just fine. And now that we have it in this resting position, what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your cover and just pull out on it. You want about a foot hanging like this. So with it like this, I think it would be a good idea to actually connect our drain hoses and plug in our wiring to it before we go any further. So to get everything plugged in, really straightforward. Everything's labeled, so the power wire which will be red and black. We'll just push them two together. And the switch wire will be the remaining one. It'll say cover switch. And let's plug that in together as well. Now for the drain tubes, how these are gonna work is there's a hole in the bottom of our uh, container here. And these are just gonna push in and then you're gonna rotate them and they're gonna lock into place. Now we can do is grab our side rails. These are side specific, so check the diagram and your instructions. Make sure you have the correct one. And you can see this machine end down here. Let's cut out. That's gonna go towards the front of our truck. So the way it's gonna work is the channel here, our cover is actually going to slide into that. So what we're gonna do is just get it started. So just kind of a quick tech tip. There's a track just like this one out here on the inside as well. And so when you're working this in, make sure that you're in both of those tracks. It's pretty easy to tell if you're not, you'll feel it kind of bind up and get hung up. But what I found it's easier to start on the outside track and kind of push down and work your way into the inside track as well. So I got them in both. We'll work our rail forward until it stops. So now with both rails in place, you install the other one just like we did the other side. What we can do is lift up, pull the supports out, let this rest on the bed rails, and we wanna push it as far forward as we can. And you also wanna make sure that everything is centered. So in our case, this one more or less dropped right into place, uh, almost exactly how it needed to be. So now what we can do is uh, get ready to clamp our rails to the bed itself. So these are specific, whether you're working at the front of the bed or the back. This one here is for the front, and that's the one we're gonna start with. So if you look on our rail, there's actually a portion here that uh, has been removed a little bit, and that's kind of a relief. That way we can get our clamp on. So what you're gonna do is put the clamp on there, and slide it all the way back until it hits this little bracket here. That's kind of a stopper. So that'll slide on like so. And then you can take the other portion here. So that's gonna slide onto this. We'll take our hardware assembly, push that through 
Take our barrel nut. And it's tricky to see when you're doing this, so you're going to kind of have to go off feel. And once you get that in place, make sure everything is lined up good. And then we can tighten this down. You don't need to really crank on this by any means. Just nice and snug by hand is usually all you'll need. So now moving on the one closest to the tailgate, more or less the same process. Again, the brackets are specific though, so make sure you have the right one. Here's that little relief there. And slide it on, get that started and ran down. Now what we can do is install what's called the kickstand. And the way this is gonna work here closest to our tailgate, it's gonna slide through this opening here like this. And you can actually adjust this plunger here to kind of apply side pressure to keep your uh, rails nice and level. Now when you do this, you want the foot to be on a surface that is flat as possible. In our case, it's not optimal. Um, you can try to flip it to the other side too, uh, if that's better. In our case, this side's actually better. And to help kind of push this a little bit further out and get more on that flat portion there, what I'm actually gonna do is add a couple of washers. So these are extra ones I had at the shop. And I'm gonna take four of them, slide them on, put it through. That leaves enough bolt exposed on the other side. It's on this side of the bolt. Pretty straightforward here. Take a flat washer, a split lock washer, and the wing nut. And I'm not going to tighten this all the way down just yet. I'm going to get it started. That way we can get our kickstand kind of lined up. And that way we'll be able to uh, make our adjustments. So once we got that started, we can turn this, get it as square as possible. And rotate that knob, get a little bit of pressure going on it. And once you have some pressure going on it, you can come back and tighten down your wing nut. And we can get out of the truck, look at our rail, make sure it's nice and level. If it is, we don't have to come back and mess with our kickstand. If the rail is visibly unlevel, you can turn this dial and make your adjustment because that's going to put pressure on it and push our rail either up or let it come further down. So I'm going to take a look at it, make sure it's straight. If it is, you can go ahead and repeat this whole same procedure over on the other side of our truck. So now we can take our top cover, which is this piece here. This is pretty simple how it works. If you look, there's gonna be a uh, opening in our cover. That's gonna line up with this nut here in this track. And this is actually adjustable. You can slide it. It's like this on each side. So what I like to do is kind of start them uh, all the way towards the back. You can line everything up. These are just gonna use a Phillips head screw. Um, they suggest using Loctite. In this case, it already has some uh, on the threads right out of the box. So we need to get it lined up. And I get this one started just a couple turns. I'll get the other side started a couple turns. And then we can push it forward exactly where we want it. And then just snug them down. And now that we have everything hooked up, we can move back to the engine bay where our fuse holder is and install the included fuse into it. That way the ton of cover can have power and don't forget to close up that dust cap. So now before we test everything, the kit does come with some lubricant and you wanna make sure that you lubricate all the parts it suggests. Uh, very importantly, the sweep rails here um, that way the cover will operate nice and smooth. So once you have that done, 
we can grab our remote and test it out. So go ahead and hit the close button. So you can see it comes out towards us at a nice and smooth pace. And when it gets towards the end here, it should stop, which it does. And now that we verified it's closing correctly, we can go ahead and open it and try it that way. So now that we know the remote works, we can come here to our switch, try that out and make sure it is functioning properly as well. So I'll go ahead and push down on the switch And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Pace Edwards Bed Locker Retractable Tonneau Cover on our 2020 GMC Sierra 2500.